um, thought I would uh, show you my new ham disco antenna install. I think this, I think I got this on uh, Amazon, but it's a uh, Workman uh, T-734 and it's a disco and broadband antenna 25 through 1300 megahertz so I can pick up the CB band. But the cool thing about this one is that, is that you can transmit. I'm going to hook this up to my ham radio with the antenna switch. I mean, I already have one disco antenna up there at the same time, but I guess what I wanted to do was be able to transmit and use my SER Sharp and, and look at channels. So if I see something that I can actually talk on, I might scan it first, then do some transmitting. But So transmission band is 25 through 27, 46 through 49, 72 through 144. So doesn't say that that's a marine band, but I guess I'll see if I can test. I'll hook up my marine radio to this and see if what kind of a range I can get. Mainly when we start taking our boat out, we'll uh, I'll check some range, we'll do some range test with that. But so yeah, I just wanted to actually have better disc on antenna than the Radio Shack one I'm using now. And uh, this one can actually transmit and receive on more frequencies. So kind of running out of light here, so I'm gonna put this on a 10 foot uh, one inch mast. And um, yeah, not very, not very many instructions. I mean, all it doesn't even. That's it. That's the only instructions you have. It's just this piece of paper. That's it. So, all right. I get this thing going here. So I'm gonna try to hurry up as quick as I can because, like I said, I want to get this up before the light goes down. So. Yeah, I guess I wish it had more instructions so I know how, how, how it, if I could, if, yeah, I would know which elements to tune because there's multiple side elements. I guess these aren't tunable, I guess. Or maybe they are. I'll, I'll see when I open it up. But yeah, here's the, uh, here's the neck here. But, uh, that's your connector. Get those going. Yeah, it's definitely thicker, way thicker than the other antenna, the Radio Shack antenna, so. Alright, I'll get it going. And then I'll, uh, I'll come back to it when it's assembled. Cool. What's interesting is these little side elements. I don't know what range, because if there's no manual, I don't know what, what range this is for, but these are, if you twist them, it looks like the antenna is tunable. I don't know if you can see that shit. Right there. It's getting dark, so yeah, you can actually attune that. So I don't know what, I guess I'll have to figure that out, but that's pretty cool. these elements out and get going. So it's put together. I can't put the side elements on until I get up there. These little little uh, extra little elements. Yeah, I wonder. I wish I'd said what band those were for. I guess I'll figure that out. But yeah, this is a much more aggressive antenna than my Radio Shack antenna. Yeah, it's actually bigger. And uh, I mean, I'll compare them side by side. You'll see them on my roof. But yeah. All right, try to get this going with the Fort Light that gets, goes down here, so. But yeah, then I also have, uh, with the conduit, I'm gonna use that thing right there. The uh, little clamps there. I'm gonna clamp onto like a vent post on the roof there. It's actually a metal pipe, so I'm hoping that will act as a, a, as a ground. So, in case I get a lighting strike. All right, cool. All right, guys, there you go. I don't know why this thing's not zooming in or not, but the, that's my old Radio Shack antenna. And that's my new uh, HD antenna slash that new disc on antenna. So you can see how much bigger it is. Let me zoom out here. So you can kind of hopefully see them both at the same time. But yeah, you can see it's much bigger and more aggressive. It's higher up. Um, maybe, like, maybe like a couple feet higher, maybe one or two feet higher. Plus I have the HD antenna installed. And that's actually why I didn't want that mast, that big flat one. I was worried about it acting as like a sail and, uh, you know, whipping around that Thing too much, but uh, there we go. Check it out. Some antennas. Cool. Hopefully this worked better. We'll see. Right, guys, here's a close-up of it. I wonder why this thing's on. This camera's jacked. Here it goes. That's the old Radio Shack antenna. Guess you can't really see them side to side, but yeah, way bigger. Cool. All right. Back here, so test of the new 
disk on antenna. Okay, so what you see in front of you is SDR Sharp, and I actually, in my other video, I showed you I have that uh, wideband RTL receiver, the one with the uh, HF, and uh, I guess it's supposed to be able to go out to HF. And actually, I haven't been able to really pick up a bunch of signals, but hopefully with this new antenna, I mean, this is not an HF antenna, and I've actually had really bad luck with my, uh, that 20 meter antenna that I was trying to, that I hooked up in my a previous video, but, so I'm using this antenna now. And as you, as you can see that it's a lot bigger than my Radio Shack antenna. So let's see here. So I'm gonna go down to hit the settings and make sure I'm on Q branch. You know, to activate the HF portion of this, you know, wideband receiver, I have to go into quadra sampling. And I'm gonna hit start. I mean, I highly doubt that I'm gonna pick up a uh, high frequency. I have actually, I have been able to pick up a few voices, but not very clearly. Um, I'm still learning, so I'm uh, just trying to figure this out. So hopefully you can hear that. I'm going to go down to 20 meter band. And that would be 20 meter. Try AM, uh, but it should be USB for 20 meter. So make sure my antenna is in there correctly. So what's weird is it looks like it's uh, not getting shit. So I try to go up to uh, CB band. Quadris. Oh, there's someone on. <laughs> Should be in Q branch. I don't know what the hell's up. There we go. What the hell's going on? So. Yeah, I was tripping out. I couldn't pick up any signals in, uh, down in 20 meter. At least, I mean, I got better signals before the Radio Shack antenna, but let's go back down to uh, 20 meter again with the right settings. Okay. Hey, I heard somebody. <laughs> cool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm getting a better signal with this antenna for sure. Cool. Alright. Cool. Okay, well, really, this is not a, this is not a HF antenna. This is more of like a VHF UHF antenna. So let's go back up there. So to activate the VHF UHF proportion of this SDR thing, I have to uh, go back to quadra sampling, and we're gonna go to one four four. Let's go two meter band here. Hit play. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks I've been having issues with this fluctuating a lot. I, I don't know if it's just this RTL receiver, this wide band. Okay, I'll zoom out on that a little bit. Two meter band here. What 
that is up. Normally I would hear something. Quarter samplings on my Skelch is at 75. Okay, I'm going to zoom out the whole band here, 20 meter. Cool, it's working. All right, I guess I'll play with it, but uh, I can't imagine it being worse than the other one, the little shitty Radio Shack one. Um, what's funny is they're about the same price. They were both like about 50 bucks. And um, yeah, because the other one's actually bigger and higher, like two two feet higher. So I'm hoping I'll get better reception. But really, the, the main reason why I got that was to, um, in, in my next video, I'm going to do a review of the uh, QYT 7900D quad band receiver. And that's actually why I kind of had it. I wanted to actually have my... Um, you know, my, my ham radio on one receiver, you know, I'm going to build like a little ham radio slash CB slash marine radio setup with an antenna switch, but I want to be able to actually like use my SDR sharp to kind of like look at signals and then, you know, be able to like transmit if I have to on a different, like a, like have one antenna for the R, the SDR and then the other one for like the, uh, be able to transmit. So like Radio Shack and the disc, whatever, either, either or, doesn't make a difference, but, um, but I guess my main goal is I would love to be able to actually communicate with um, Big Bear, like up to Big Bear from Costa Mesa. I mean, I don't know, it might be too far away. Uh, hit like the uh, Keller Peak repeater. I mean, I guess I'll try it, but because a lot of the area, I, I stop in an area which is kind of like, you know, the beach is coming this way, coming up, hit the peak, and then I'm on the other side of the valley, off-roading in there, so... The, the theory was my wife could communicate with me while I'm up there because I can't, I don't get a cell signal where I off road. So it would bank off the repeater and come back down in the Valley where I, where I off road and I'd be able to communicate with her. So that would be cool. So that's going to be like one of the next challenges, I guess, to get that going and see if I can get it to work, but cool. All right. Well, I guess we'll see how this thing works. All right. Later. All right. Back here, guys. I forgot to, uh, the HF antenna and the uh, VHF antenna are two different ones. So, forgot to switch it back over to the VHF, so I was still on the Radio radio Shack antenna, the old disc gun antenna. I wasn't on, the, the new disc gun antenna wasn't on UHF, VHF, so let's go back here. Go back, uh, cube, go back to quarter sampling again, and uh, go back up to 144. Two meter band, I'm going to zoom out. And let's try this again. Okay, bring this down a little bit. And range down. I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody that's actually watching this video can tell me why all of a sudden it goes crazy on me sometimes. Like the, it goes sort of nuts on me. How it just fluctuates, kind of goes up. I get. I don't know what the deal is. Like, uh, why? Okay. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what it is between this one, if it's this one, or the actual, like, my other RTL dongles, like the non-wideband ones, actually don't seem to fluctuate like that. They goes up like that sometimes. So. Cool. It definitely seems like it's coming more clearly, but I can't tell. I don't know. I'll play with it. Cool. All right. 